In this episode of Mind Pump, we wanted to talk about uh, techniques that you could do at home that are actually extremely effective at building muscle, at building strength. You know, working out at home can be tough because you don't have heavy weights, and everybody knows that heavy weights is the best way to build muscle. But there are two genuine techniques of training that have tremendous muscle building effects regardless. I mean, regardless, even if you are advanced. Now, one of them is an old technique called isometric training. Isometric training has tons and tons of literature supporting it in terms of muscle building, muscle fiber recruitment, uh, getting people to get stronger. It's just most people do it wrong. So we talk about how to do it right in this episode. We also talk about something called blood flow restricting training, restriction training, or occlusion training. Occlusion training is a more uh, recent invention, uh, or I should say it's been used more recently, although it's been around for a little while. Tons and tons of science supporting it. It actually builds muscle in similar ways to heavy lifting. Now, the cool thing about isometrics and occlusion training or BFR training is they don't require heavy weights at all. Isometrics require no weights. BFR training you could do with resistance bands or like 10-pound dumbbells. When you combine them both, you get exceptional, exceptional uh, results. Now, in this episode, we also talk about how Adam is going to be doing a free mobility webinar. I want to make sure I, I mention that site because we've never taught a class online uh, for people. This is the first time we've ever done that. You can go to mindpumpwebinar.com, sign up, and watch Adam teach a mobility class. But nonetheless, in this episode, we actually give you a full workout on how you can combine isometrics with occlusion training or BFR training for maximum amazing results. By the way, we have a uh, occlusion training guide that teaches you how to do this properly because that requires a little bit more instruction. Now, that guide is very inexpensive. We normally sell it for $27, but we, because we're doing this episode and we haven't talked about that guide in a long time, we actually wrote that guide about four years ago. We're going to give it to you for $13.50. We're going to take it and make it 50% off. Um, here's how you get the BFR or occlusion training guide. Go to mapsbfr.com. That's M A P S B F R.com. Use the code BFR50 for the discount. Again, that'll give you 50% off that guide. It only makes it $13.50. So it's super inexpensive. Also, this episode is brought to you by one of our favorite sponsors, Z Biotics. Now, Z Biotics blew our minds a while ago. They're the first genetically modified bacteria, or I should say probiotic supplement. So it's these are probiotics that they modified to produce specific effects or results. So what did they design this bacteria to do? Well, check this out. They designed this bacteria to produce an enzyme that breaks down the negative byproducts of alcohol consumption. So one of the reasons why people may feel crappy the day after they drink alcohol is because of something called acetaldehyde. Acetaldehyde builds up in the system and you have enzymes that break it down. But if you don't have enough of the enzymes to break this down, like can, what can happen when you start to drink a lot of alcohol, you start to get these really crappy negative effects. You might feel inflamed, you might feel a headache, feel groggy, irritable, um, just genuinely not good. Well, when you take Z-Biotics before you drink, these genetically modified bacteria go to your gut and start producing this enzyme that breaks down this uh, byproduct of alcohol production. So now when you drink and you get this buildup of this particular uh, you know, compound, again called uh, uh, ac ac acetaldehyde, got to say that right, acetaldehyde, these, bio these bacteria produce this enzyme, breaks it down, and you feel really good. So if you're like a lot of people and you're drinking a little bit more because you're at home, maybe enjoying a glass of wine or you need to relax a little bit, have Z-Biotics so that you can negate some of the negative effects of your alcohol consumption. And because you are a Mind Pump listener, you get 10% off any of their products. So go to their website, zbiotics.com. That's the letter Z-B-I-O-T-I-C-S.com forward slash Mind Pump. Check out their, web their website. They have all the science, all the literature supporting what I'm talking about. And use the code Mind Pump for 10% off. Again, that's zbiotics.com forward slash Mind Pump. Get 10% off any of their Zbiotics products to help you with alcohol consumption. I, you know, we've been talking a lot about adding 
uh, value to uh, you know clients at home workouts. Just we've been we've, we talked to a lot of personal trainers. Probably a good portion of our listener base our personal trainers. And I think, uh, we all have been listening and reading the DMS, by the way, we, uh, I think all three of us agree that we try our best to try and answer as many as we possibly course, can always. Yep, of course. And, you know, there's been a common theme, I think amongst all of us and of trainers trying to find ways to keep their clientele up and, and build value and, and add value to clients. And yeah, like, how do I maintain my, my, my value to my clients when I can't meet with them and the gym is closed? Mm -hmm. And then the other most common one is from people who are not trainers. These are just people who work out and they're like, how do I keep my progress going or how do I prevent my body from, you know, sliding back because I don't have access to a lot of equipment. I'm at home. I think the, the mobility webinar that you're that you're doing is is brilliant. I think that's going to provide so much value. Well, you know, and it it's a uh, I mean it's a full class. You're, well, I also mm -hmm. think it's a, an example of of practicing what we preach. I mean, uh, even though Mind Pump is done well and scaled to where it's at, it doesn't mean that at tough times like this, uh, we're we're not affected. And it's real easy to get this like you know scared and oh shit, what do we do? Um, you know, but revert back to adding value, adding value to people's lives. And always, you know, we, I have a little more time because I'm at home in quarantine and we're not doing the same stuff we used to. So, you know, Doug and I got together and I, this has been something that's been asked a lot. Like, as I've talked about the class, the mobility classes that I used to teach. And, uh, in fact, we haven't ever given, um, our audience a kind of, uh, perspective of what it, what it looks like for us to coach somebody. We've never right. shown. We've never shown how we actually. We talk about how we train people. We talk about fitness, obviously, a lot, but nobody's ever really seen us um, in, in our, action in our element. Yeah, in our and, element. And so, and this is not like a. I, I know it's a it's a webinar. Um, the website is Mind Pump Webinar, but it's not Adam doing a seminar. He's literally. Yeah. It's a virtual class, walking you through every uh, component of each one of those exercises, giving you all the cues and, and ways to kind of feel it and enhance that experience He's, even more. It's like you're taking his class. And right. It's what made um, all of us successful. It's what made Adam very well known. He, he teaches, he cues mobility better than anybody I've ever seen. And what I mean by that is he does it in a way to where you watch, you understand, and you can feel what you're supposed to because mobility requires really, really good connection and it requires really, really good form. Otherwise it loses its value. So I think what you're doing is really good. Um, and what I want to do with this episode is bring more value, bring yeah. even more value to people who are, um, who are, who don't have access to a gym because especially for people who are advanced, mm -hmm. you know, if you look, if you're, uh, if you're not advanced, if you're beginner or intermediate, like, you know, if you follow a good workout at home, you're not going to see, rapid declines in strength and muscle, even if you don't have access to weights. In fact, many of you might even improve because you're doing new stuff. But when you're advanced, it's really tough. If you're squatting 300 pounds at the gym and now you're at home, you have no equipment or you're, you have bands, like how do I keep my, my squat from dropping? How do I keep my legs from shrinking? How do I keep my muscle from atrophying? So there's a bit of a challenge there. And one of the biggest challenges is you don't have heavy resistance. You mm -hmm. just don't have heavy resistance accessible to you. So you have to figure out other ways to, you know, yeah, to the get water jugs aren't really going to cut it. Right. <laughs> that, that's so funny. I see that a lot of that going on right yeah. now. You know, th this also reminds me too of kind of the old formula of, of how we first started the podcast. We would come out, uh, you know, pointing out things that were popular, especially if they were popular people that were sharing just you know, crap advice. And we wouldn't just point it out. Uh, it wasn't like a, you know, calling people out by name it was more so trying to educate the audience and then what we would do afterwards is you know this is how we would do these things and kind of how i think this this episode will unfold for people is you know we've been kind of talking shit about a lot of the at home videos and stuff that we see pop i mean everybody's just like you know you see this lifting the couch up you just referenced you know i see people like squatting with five gallon jugs and like yep. you know doing all this weird shit what they're trying to do is they're trying to mimic weights without weights which is okay but you're missing out on some extremely effective well, there's, techniques there's there's incredible ways to be creative and smart at the same time it's not, and and that's and, and right now what I see, I see and effective. I see a lot yeah. of I see a lot of um, rookie trainers 
uh, just, you know, who could come up with the most creative way to do an exercise at home? You know, whether that be picking your couch up or your coffee, doing something weird on your coffee table. Using your cat. Right. Yeah. yeah. I've seen yeah. everything. Yeah. I've seen everything Pit right bowl now. Pitbull squats. And yeah. there is there is a, a, a more effective way to be creative with your workouts. And so that's kind of what it's inspired uh, this this topic today. And I'm really excited to share this because we we organize it in a way that when you're done with the episode, we're also going to give you a specific workout to go try and do. Oh yeah, at the end of this, you'll get a full workout. We're gonna we're gonna give you a workout that you can follow. But there's two things that everybody is. I don't want to say everybody, but most people are are not even looking at. There are two training techniques. They're one, old. One is ancient. One is relatively new. Both of them. Okay, and this is I'm not making this up. Both of the ones I'm about to tell you have tremendous strength and muscle building effects even when you compare them to traditional resistance training. So these are not poor substitutes. In fact, these two things that we're going to talk about today are techniques that advanced people benefit from. And, and I, I, we've experienced them firsthand and they are backed by lots and lots of literature and science. Mm -hmm. One of them is blood flow restrictive training. So we'll talk about that. The other one is isometrics training, which has actually been around for a long time, fell out of favor when equipment got invented, lots of machines and all that stuff. But if you look at the literature supporting both of these, in fact, you're going to ask yourself why you weren't doing these even when you were going to the gym because they are, they are not poor substitutes. These will build muscle and strength even if you're somebody who's an advanced lifter, even if you're somebody who's been working out for you know five or 10 years on your own consistently. So let's let's talk about these individually, right? Let's start with BFR, otherwise known as blood flow restrictive training, otherwise known as the scientific term is called occlusion training. Now this uh, BFR, you know, started uh, a long time ago. It was actually discovered decades ago um, by somebody who uh, was experimenting with different ways of, of, of getting, uh, of working on rehab. And that's actually where it became popular. Later on, athletes started seeing the effects of BFR because they'd go to their physical therapist and they'd get, you know, they'd get they'd use BFR and see the rehab effects, and they started applying it to their training. And then bodybuilders got their hands on it and noticed that it, it would add like a quarter inch to their arms. People who already are advanced. Now, I was introduced to BFR late in my career. I didn't know about this until, um, gosh, until we, right when we started the podcast, mm -hmm. which was what five years ago or something like that. Yeah. And I remember, um, I think it was Adam and I that were talking about it. And at that time, him and I, we loved to, to we were trying to compete for calf gains because <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Both him and I are, are, you know, calves is not our genetic strength. Let's just, <laughs> let's just put it that way. That way. It's a body part we didn't neglect calf for years. Calf impaired. And yeah. then we also don't have the greatest calf building genetics. So both of us used BFR to see what would happen. I applied BFR to my calves, and no joke, my calves are stubborn. They do. If I add a quarter inch to my calves, it's like a, a miracle. I did something crazy, right? With BFR, I added almost an inch to my calves, and then I applied BFR training to my arms and my quads. My arms grew a quarter inch, which is crazy considering, again, that I've been working out uh, forever. Mm -hmm. And then when I applied it to my legs, now my legs, my upper thighs respond fast anyway. That's my like my genetic gift where my quads just blow up. I My legs got, it got silly to the point where I actually stopped doing BFR for my legs because it was crazy. The experience I had with them personally, because um, when I first heard about it, I thought it was, it was, I was like, there's no way this is going to work. This is stupid. It's a new, you know, well, fake technique or whatever. Well, you have to talk about why though it became so popular first in rehab. You know, one of the things when you are rehabbing a client, uh, one of the big, the greatest challenges is especially when if you're dealing with athletes, right? An athlete, especially a professional athlete that's getting big, uh, paid big money to be on the field or on the court every day that they're off with an injury is, is, uh, you know, losing money, right? So getting that athlete recovered and back, uh, to their sport as fast as they possibly can, the safest way they can, uh, is the most important. So this is why there's so much money and research around this, right? So that's mm -hmm. why we we found this and we got to this place later on with science. And what they found was, you know, when you did the blood occlusion training. So if I had somebody, let's use a like a, a knee, uh, like a knee tear, very common uh, MCL, ACL type of tear. 
uh, in the knee. It's especially in sports. It's very common. A lot of people have dealt with knee injuries. After that, uh, it's extremely uh, tender. You're very weak. Mm -hmm. um, it's still kind of healing. So it's it'd be very dangerous to take somebody who just came out of knee surgery and do a barbell squat with them right away. It's I not super stable. No, it's not stable yet. They've atrophied. They've lost muscle around the knee. And to, to do a complex movement that's loaded heavy, uh, very dangerous, and could result in them being injured again. And that's the last thing you want to do when we're trying to recover. But then at the same time, speed is important and getting them back to their where they were before. So this is where BFR came in. Yeah, and and correct me, Sal, if I'm if I'm going to explain this, you know, wrong or, or not. But like the way I understand it is, it it's a great way to mimic uh, hypertrophy in terms of like being able to deplete uh, this oxygen and, and create that that environment for muscles to grow. And so this is a way you could do that without having to have like this heavy load or or multiple reps to get you to deplete this oxygen. It's a way to kind of right. mimic that process. Yeah. So here's why BFR is so valuable, especially right now. You need very light weight to make this effective. This is why they liked it with rehab. Quick explanation on kind of how it works. Let's say I'm going to work my arms and I'm going to use BFR. What I would do is I would take a, like a knee wrap, um, which a knee wrap actually works really well because it's wide and it's elastic. And then I'm going to tie it around my upper arm near my shoulder or near my armpit. And I tie it around to what I start to feel pressure. Now, you don't want to tie it off so tightly that you literally cut off circulation, but you want to tie it off tight enough to where it prevents uh, muscle venous outflow. It prevents blood flowing out my muscle, but it doesn't prevent blood flowing in. So now I'm getting this imbalance. More blood is flooding into the muscle, especially as I'm exercising it, and but less blood is flowing out. I'm giving myself an enhanced pump, but also... While I'm doing that, I am reducing oxygen to the muscle tremendously. Now, why is this important? Okay, your fast twitch muscle fibers are the ones that are responsible for strength and power. Your slow twitch muscle fibers are the ones that are responsible for endurance. Endurance requires a lot of oxygen. Strength does not. Strength requires, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're moving anaerobically. You're using ATP and other sources of energy. So this is why if you... Are, are exerting tons of power, you don't last long. If you want to last long, you got to go slower and exert less power, and then you can last over periods of time. So when you tie off the arms, you're reducing oxygen to the muscle. And what this does is it forces the fast twitch muscle fibers to do all the work, even though you're lifting a very, very light weight. So mm -hmm. using myself as an example, I mean, if I'm strong and I'm going heavy, I mean, I could do decent curls with 45 50 pound dumbbells. I could do 10 decent reps doing that and I'd get a great workout doing that. If I tie off my arms, 10 to 15 pounds mm -hmm. and I am, that's it. And you'll know once you do this, you'll do the reps and it feels light as the oxygen starts to deplete, which happens very quickly. You get this insane burn. Yes, in that the muscle. lactate burn. Oh, right. Like so, th th this is one of those ways you'll get there a lot faster than you would even, uh, you know, lifting weights and like having to to go through all those reps just to get to that point where you feel that burn really start to set in. And now this is why it's great for rehab. You have an injury. I can't have somebody, you know, do a, a leg or arm exercise or whatever with a, a normal load that would stimulate muscle growth because they're injured. But I can use twenty percent of a normal load with blood flow restriction, with occlusion, so that the muscle now responds as if the person is using heavy load. So this is perfect for right now. Mm -hmm. You're stuck at home and you have bands. And maybe your bands, you know, you could sit there and do 100 curls with the bands. Try doing it occluded. Yeah. Try doing it with your arms. Ter ter Next thing you know, you do 30 reps the first set, then do 15 and 10 the following sets, and it feels like you're curling you know, 200 pounds, like you can barely, and the burn yeah. is intense and the muscles almost don't know the difference. That's the thing. They almost don't know the difference. The fast twitch muscle fibers get worked like when you lift heavy weight. And the, and again, the results are exceptional. Again, this was done. This was first, uh, observed back in, in the, in the mid 1960s. There was a Japanese researcher who experimented with this. And he actually, what, one thing that he noticed was what, when he sat in, a, a kneeling position for long periods of times, his calves would get really pumped. So that kneeling position for him naturally occluded his calves. And he noticed his calves would get really pumped 
And then they'd actually kind of build a little bit. And he thought, this is really strange. So then he started doing experiments with various techniques. And he found that when he did this to people, that they built muscle like when they were working out. Here's some of the other benefits of, of this kind of training. It creates less damage to your body. So you can actually apply it more frequently to your body. So I could do you know a heavy, hard bicep workout, you know, maybe two days a week where I'm really, really pushing it. That's about as far as I'd want to go. BFR, I could apply three, four days a week to my biceps. And I'm, I'm telling you, this is true now. You're going to get similar results to when you're doing your heavy exercises. That's how effective BFR is. Here's the other wonderful thing about BFR. We're in a situation where we may want to maintain a very strong, healthy immune system. Well, training really, really hard, although if you're fit and you do it right, over time it builds a strong immune system, in the short term, you notice a dip in immune system. This is why if you're fighting off an illness and then you train real hard, you're probably going to get the illness. It's going to hit you, you know, full blast. Because BFR is, it, it's, it's, it simulates intensity. It simulates heavy weight and you get the similar results in terms of muscle growth. You don't hammer the body in the same way. It's far less damaging uh, to the body. Um, it also causes some really interesting things to happen in terms of hormones. I mean, when they do studies on, and you can find these studies, I'm going to actually look them up right now. These studies are, I'm not the only one that's, uh, you know, these are oh, pretty this is well some of the This is some of the stuff that I saw Ben Greenfield touting recently. So mm -hmm. I saw him uh, talking about this on a video maybe a, a week or two ago. He was sharing this um, about you know, I, I actually it was it was probably him who really sparked uh, this for me recently, because I wasn't even thinking that way with BFR. That hey, this is and we've kind of talked about this, right? We've told our audience already that hey, you know this this is a time where your your overall health is is most important. Right. Getting building a bunch of muscle right now, I'll, even if that's what the questions are around, <clears throat> shouldn't be your number one in priority. It should be taking care of yourself and staying healthy. And that's what he was making the case that hey. You know, this is not the time to hammer and stress your body. If you're stressed about work, you're stressed about being at home all day with your kids, you got all this other stress, and then you go hammer yourself in the mm -hmm. garage mm -hmm. and, and kill yourself in there, and, and that's where you get sick. And so he was making this case for, you know, this is a great time to really start to include BFR, and I, and I agree 100%. It's a hack. It, yeah. This is like a hack right now. Like, okay, I don't want to stress my immune system, but I want to maintain my gains. I still want to build muscle. I still want to, you know, feel the way I feel when I go to the gym. Well, enter this advanced kind of training technique. Again, it, it, it's only relatively recently become popular among strength athletes, but it's been used for rehab for a long, very long time. Mm -hmm. And we've all used it and experienced significant results. Growth hormone release you see after training. So anytime you work out, we notice if, if the workout is effective, we tend to notice a spike in growth hormone. Well, check this out. BFR training uh, studies show will release 170% higher levels of growth hormone than traditional resistance training. So you actually wow. get a greater spike in growth hormone from BFR training than you do from traditional resistance training. Now, growth hormone isn't necessarily like testosterone. It's not this huge driver of muscle growth, mm -hmm. but it's excellent in its protective abilities. So it helps with your muscle collagen, your tendons. It's very good for, for recovery and rehab and in combination with hormones like testosterone, it can be an effective uh, muscle builder. Again, BFR raises that more than traditional resistance training. Here's something else that's interesting. They can actually look at how genes are being expressed uh, through different methods of training. BFR has positive effects on insulin-like growth factor, mTOR, and myostatin. These are all things that when we measure and we see the positive impact on these things, that these signal the body to build muscle. It's very strange. Like when you have someone use BFR training with 20% load and you compare that to heavy training and you take them into a laboratory and don't tell the scientists who did what and you had to measure all the all the signals, they're going to look at both of them and be like, "Um, it's it's kind of hard to decipher. It looks like both of them sent this really loud, you know, muscle building system, uh, signal." So it's it's exceptionally uh, effective and it's something that, you know, again, you could do at home with bands or really light dumbbells or jugs. This is now jugs of water now become valuable. You know, how much is a jug of water worth? 10 pounds, 15 pounds? How are you gonna, what am I gonna do? 100,000 curls? <laughs> do BFR with that. Mm -hmm. Now you've got yourself in a, a you know, good weight. Well, this is uh, another reason why I really love this conversation right now is I bet a big portion of our audience doesn't even know 
that we wrote a BFR guide like four years ago. And the reason why we don't push it really hard on the on the show is because uh, we would never uh, our integrity. We're not going to sell it like it's this magical thing that's going to be, be it's better than traditional weight training. Mm-hmm. But this is a great example, though, because what we do know about the science behind it uh, to support how valuable it can be, especially now. It, mm-hmm. That's my point. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is a, a great, and this is what I meant by you know cracking on you know the the masses that are just kind of throwing all these creative weird exercise the reason why i crack up about it is just because i know this okay i know damn well i've trained enough clients i've trained enough clients that i need them to do homework and so that ain't none of my fucking clients you know picking the couch up all weird or going to get a five gallon jug of water and hugging it and squatting they ain't doing none of that stuff they're not doing, and if they do do it, they're going to do it one time, and mm-hmm. that's it. They're not going to follow. Yeah, it's like a novelty thing. It is, and it and it's and it's more silly than it is realistic that they're going to follow it. And not to mention the the like you said, Sally. How many how many times am I going to have to curl, you know, uh, milk jugs in order to get a good pump or actually train my biceps well? When there's stuff that you can do like isometrics and BFR that are incredible, that it's supported by research to show how great it is, and here is a good place for this. This is where I would take a client and write a, a workout very similar to the one that we wrote for today's episode. Totally. So mm-hmm. I want to tell you you know, kind of how to do it. And of course, uh, Adam's right. We do have a guide. It's called the Occlusion uh, Training Guide that kind of breaks down how to do it. But I'll explain a little bit here on the podcast. Um, if you have knee wraps, if you have any kind of elastic wrap, supportive type wrap, you can even use long, uh, if you have a really, really long, sturdy uh, pieces of gauze, wrap those, if you want to work your biceps and triceps or your forearms, you wrap them around your arm, right under your shoulder, tight enough to where you could feel the pressure, but not so tight where you're just like, oh, I can't barely move. Then you do your exercises. And the way it's broken down, and remember at the end of the episode, we'll, we'll, we'll give, lay this all out for you. But the way you typically want to do this is you want to do your first set, about 30 reps. Then you rest for about 30 seconds or so, and then you go 15 reps, and you repeat this about five times. So it goes 30 reps, rest, 15 reps, rest, 15 reps, rest. Now, I'm, I'm not joking here. Grab a weight that is light. You are gonna, you will be blown yeah. away at how fast this, you get fatigued and how little you can it's do. It's going to really burn. Yeah. It's fire. Give it a chance. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very painful. You could do this for your legs as well, and the way you would tie them off is up near the groin, around the leg. You could do it for the calves below the knee, but you can actually just tie up above the leg. So it is a little bit limiting in terms of like, uh, you know, isolating arms, isolating your legs. Yeah, limbs only. It limbs only. It's not going to be good for chest, back, and, you know, these these gross motor movements, uh, you know, in terms of that. So that's why we we also wanted to bring up another technique that's, you know, sort of a lost art uh, that that is like massively effective. And it, and it has like multiple studies to prove, uh, you know, just how much you, you gain strength uh, and, and you don't even realize you're gaining all this strength without any weight applied. This is just the simple technique of isometric training. Oh, isometrics, you know, if you look at the history, this is something that I really, really enjoyed reading about when you look at the history of muscle building and strength building. And one thing that I realized I, probably 10 to 12 years into my career was that, you know, a lot of the information that I would get on advanced muscle building and fat burning training was coming from these bodybuilders and athletes that were, you know, they were on anabolic steroids or they were paid by publications to kind of, you know, push people in a certain direction. So there was good information, but some of it was like, ah, it didn't really apply as well. When I read the old stuff, when I looked way back in the, you know, the way that they trained in the 1910s, 20s, 30s, and even the 40s, before anabolic steroids, before protein powder, before creatine, you know, these guys and girls were... They were, they were just doing what works, and they would write books about what works. This is when I learned you know, full-body cha- training and frequency. And, and I also, by the way, these guys blew me away with their feats of strength. Yeah. Like Eugene Sando is a good example. This guy could do a one-arm bent press with 300 pounds. I don't, mm-hmm. know, I don't know any bodybuilders that could do that now. You're talking about a 190-pound shredded man who was able to lift this tremendous amount of weight? It's it's it was they incredible. got insanely good with muscle recruitment. Oh, it, and this is this is one of the massive benefits to, to isometric training. Uh, I mean, they've they've shown in studies in German studies that you gain five percent strength increase in one week. 
Wow. And and it's it's crazy. Like so, there's other things that involve um, with the the speed of of muscles. Muscles can only move so fast, and so uh, this is the force velocity curve. So this is a principle where basically you can't you can't move your muscles uh, fast under a lot of load. And now what isometrics provides, there's no load. And so basically I can, I can squeeze and recruit as much maximal force as possible. Uh, and this is what really allows for you to really develop like an even higher amplitude the, of strength. The, you recruit the most muscle fibers you'll recruit is when your muscles are pushing a load that they can't lift and they can't move it. So if I'm doing a curl and it's heavy and I'm lifting it, the, the my body will never recruit the maximal number of muscle fibers because it found the right amount to lift the weight. Now, the only time your muscle fibers where you get the max recruitment is when you're pushing against an object that's not moving. Your body is literally turning them all on. Studies show that isometrics actually do that. And what happens when you practice isometrics is you learn, your body actually learns how to recruit more muscle fibers easier. And where I was going with the eight, with the old strongmen and, and, and strength athletes back in the day, all of them used isometrics heavily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was actually an extremely popular form of training. It only fell out of favor when gyms and equipment became a thing because with isometrics, you don't need equipment. So why would we push something that requires no equipment? Right. Your best strength coaches will advocate for it. Oh, Still yeah. to this day, 100%. There's not a good strength coach out there that will tell you, oh, isometrics are, are a waste of time or a joke. All of them implement it into their routines already. You know, I, I have to shout out one of our buddies, uh, Coach Eugene uh, Tao. He has been posting, I think I've seen at least three or four different uh, great uh, isometric exercises where he's just using a towel. And and that that's an example to me. That's how I, uh, even before I, I got to meet Eugene, I knew he was a good coach because I, I can see how his brain operates. Right. He knows everyone's locked inside the house right now. They don't have access to a gym. So what are some things that he can really add value to the people's lives that are following him and paying attention to him? And he knows, like we do, the research that supports isometric training. So what is he showing? He's not the guy who's in there showing, you know, doing skull crushers with the couch or doing weird mm -hmm. exercises and movements just to be creative with your home shit that you have Stay right now. Stay effective. Right. There's He's ways to do that. 100. And I tell you what, if you've never done an isometric workout. Not the, in the right way. <laughs> oh, yeah. You have no idea what you're in for. Oh, yeah. You have no idea. If it's that's in, you know, here's here's one of the, the, the critiques of isometrics has always been, well, the strength gains that you get in isometrics are only specific to the exact position that you're in. So in other words, right. if I'm pushing with a with a good isometric position in a half squat, I'm only going to get good at that half squat. Well, that's actually not true. Studies show that the strength actually goes 10 degrees outside of the range of motion, both up and down. And then you get strength gains even further than that. It just becomes diminishing the further you move out. In other words, if I do an isometric squat at 90 degrees, I'm, I'm going to get the same strength gains at 80 degrees and at 100, you know, 100 degrees. And then it's going to be diminishing as I move away, but I'm still getting all those strength gains. So how do you apply isometrics? You move into through different positions and apply the tension in different positions, and mm -hmm. you'll find, again, tremendous strength gains. One of the most popular at-home workout programs of all time was uh, Charles Atlas's Dynamic Tension. He used to sell this oh, through yeah. comic books, mm -hmm. and it was all based around this. And, you know, I remember the, there were before and afters of people, and this is back in the 40s and 50s, but people would get tremendous results, and they never used weights at all. Yeah. It was 100%. Isometrics. This is a technique that's been long lost. There's a there's yeah. a martial art. Maybe Doug can look it up. Look at uh, martial art most famous for uh, for isometrics. I want to say it's like Kwachu Kimbo or something like that. Oh, I don't know. Oh. There's a there's a famous I say Tai Chi. I, I, there's a famous martial art that is uh, that is known for its isometrics and it's and for and that's what they they present is its muscle building effect while you're also doing these like it's probably it's there was probably a lot of Shaolin monk yeah, yeah that, that that utilized uh, um, you know that and then Bruce Lee obviously made it famous too as he would use it in between sets and would uh you know do these isometric poses Dude, to really enhance his strength. Bruce Lee was a huge advocate of isometric training which he learned from the old time uh strength athletes. And you know, Bruce Lee of course was a small uh smaller man, but he was the first muscular action uh movie action figure. Mm -hmm. there, before Bruce Lee, there was no shredded muscular 
you know, action person in movies. The, 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 the general, the way that they used to look back then was just kind of a sturdy looking dude, you know, tough guy. Whatever. Then comes Bruce Lee, lat spread. He would do that famous lat spread where you'd hear the bones cracking, you know, when he'd do the thing. Yeah. And he, he wasn't a big guy, but he was shredded and muscular, especially for a guy of his genetics. And of course, the guy was totally natural. People don't realize Bruce Lee actually inspired a lot of bodybuilders. Flex Wheeler became a bodybuilder because of Bruce Lee. Hmm. So Bruce Lee was this really shredded, muscular, look at some of his old pictures in these old Kung Fu movies, all natural, doesn't have great super muscle building genetics. He's obviously a slight, you know, you know, Kung Fu fighter or whatever, or Jeet Kune Do fighter or whatever. Um, but he had this incredible physique that he built through a combination of training techniques mm -hmm. and isometrics was huge for him. And well, it, he found it made him extremely powerful in his martial arts. Yeah, to, to kind of reiterate some of the points that we've mentioned uh, for BFR training in terms of like uh, it, it being safe. So, uh, you know, the thing about like always loading the body and loading the joints inevitably, uh, I mean, you have to you have to go back in and really reinforce the joints like on the off time with mobility drills and all these things to try and keep the upkeep. So uh, everything is, you know, reinforced properly so that way, you know, you can sustain the, that amount of load. Uh, whereas with something like isometric training, you can utilize maximal force and then let off. And there's there's a lot less uh, ramifications to that. And the overall damage uh, is way less in the turnover. So you could actually like, you know, uh, come back and then do a, a workout just as intense, you know, the following day uh, uh, with less uh, uh, damage. I, I think that isometrics are just, it's a hard thing to to sell to the average person because it just it doesn't seem to make logical sense. I mean, most it people seem fancy. It, well, yeah, that's what it is, right? And 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 I think I even had a hard time as a trainer. I think explaining it in my early career, like I knew that it's been around forever and the value of it, but I honestly I didn't use it like I started using it later on in my career. And I think a lot of that just had to be I couldn't articulate to my clients like how why this is so valuable until I really started to grasp the, the 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 role and the importance of like the central nervous system and what's going on on a neurological level when we exercise and mm -hmm. I get I get into this a tiny bit in the uh the the mobility uh webinar that I that I did uh because that's very similar like when you're we're working on mobility and we're trying to find a new range of motion there's there's a, a neurological thing that's happening right what happens is we 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 lose this good communication from our brain to our muscles. Like we just we forget that before they move or do anything, there's something that happens in the brain first. The brain tells the muscles to move and do that. And so when you train isometrics, you're training that portion of the exercise also, not just the stimulation that the muscles are getting, but also the ability for you to connect from the brain right. to the it's muscles. The neurotransmitters. Right. And and for it to be uh, solidify a really strong pathway and why that's so important when you then go back and do traditional weight training is you now have the ability to connect to the muscles that you want to develop better than anyone. This is why, and now you've mentioned this, Sal, many times before on the show, uh, why bodybuilders are so good at being able to connect to a muscle because they do ice probably more than anybody else. When you look at the average gym population, bodybuilders use isometric training more than anyone else, whether they, they know it or not. They call it posing. Right. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. know how to isolate. They know how to flex their lats. They know how to isolate their chest, how to make the upper chest look more defined. They feel their muscles more. Yes. And, you, and look, you're talking about the connection. Again, I'll go back to what I just said. Moving an unmovable load or or tensing and creating lots of tension through isometrics is one of the easiest ways to, to recruit the most amount of muscle fibers. That's when your body mm -hmm. and your, your your neurological system is firing all those muscle fibers. You don't lose that. By the way, that's a skill that you actually get better at. So what happens then when you go back to the gym and you're lifting weights? Here's what happens. You feel way more solid. Mm -hmm. I don't know how else better to explain it. You're more connected. You know, uh, somebody messaged me the other day about old man strength. Remember we talked about that before? Yeah. yeah. Where, you know, this is- a, You a, feel that like in a handshake right away. Yeah, it's a funny term, right? That that guys will use to describe why they're, why they're, they're you know, 50-year-old uncle can- you know, It's kick, true though. Can kick their ass in wrestling, even though that, you know, they go to the gym and, the, and they can outlift them or whatever. I remember this as an 18-year-old kid, you know, if, if I would go work out, you know, in the gym with my uncle- um, you know, I'd lift more weight than them, but then we would, you know, arm wrestle or shake hands or, or wrestle on the ground. Like this dude is way stronger than me. What the hell's going on? They have, they've been in their body longer. They have better connections to their muscle. They're more solid. Okay. Isometric training trains that for you. So then when you go do your bench press or your squat or your mm -hmm. overhead press, 
what ends up happening is you just feel like you're active. You feel like the muscles are controlled. You feel like you're stable. You're strong. There's also speculation when you talk, when you read these old articles of, of, of bodybuilders, what they would all say about isometric training. Because remember, bodybuilding, posing on stage has been around since the 1930s or so, right? 1930s started to get a little bit popular. And what they would say is that the isometric training made their muscles look denser. Mm -hmm. That would actually make their muscles look harder. And I think that's because they learned how to recruit Oh, More yeah. muscle fibers. I mean, your body has natural governor, governing systems in it to to protect uh, your joints, to protect your ligaments, to protect you know your muscles from getting torn. And so, like when you're going to lift weights, uh, you already have like a sort of operating system there, you know, that allows only so much for you to produce just enough force to to be able to move this object. Isometrics help you to stretch that limitation even further. So now I have an excess of, of muscle fibers now that I can add into this movement. This is why I, I, I love uh, Sal. You're the first person I ever heard say this. I've probably repeated it more times than you've even said it now. Because I think even though it's an, an oversimplification of a, a very complex thing we're talking about, I think that's what you need to do for the average person to really grasp what value you're getting from what we're talking about. And that's your amplifier speaker analogy that you used to give all the time that I love to share because the way I look at it when, when we're talking about this, everybody thinks about lifting weights all the time and sets, reps, exercise, everything like that. And they're all they're and all that kind of falls under this category of like think talking about the speaker. You know, and how great the speakers that's the are. Muscles. Yeah, that's the muscles, right? The muscles are the speakers. The amplifier is the is the CNS. And by by training your training isometrics, you're investing in a better amplifier. You're investing in a, a more powerful amplifier. You're training to have a better amplifier. And that combined with good speakers builds an incredible stereo system. Well, well this is why mm -hmm. isometric... By the way, we put a lot of isometric training in our MAPS Anywhere program because we know its value. Yep. But this is why isometric training combines so well to BFR. Isometric training really does a phenomenal job of training the amplifier, of training the central nervous system. BFR does a phenomenal job of training the speakers and training the muscle. Yep. You combine those two... You're covered. You actually have a very effective, if you do this right, okay, you have a very effective muscle building workout combination that requires very little or no resistance. If you have bands, if you have a broomstick, and then you just have your body, you've got everything you need to combine isometrics with BFR. Oh, besides the thing to tie off your arms and legs. That's it. That's all you need. You need nothing else. Try this out and watch what happens. So I think, what do you guys think? Give them the Low workout, impact, right? high yeah. effect. Let's All right, so this. so here's the deal. We'll start with legs. This is a full body workout, okay? So you can follow this whole, this entire workout, or you can do what we've been recommending, uh, which is you could take this whole workout and divide it up into two workouts throughout the day. So you do 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night. It doesn't matter which one, uh, but I found since when I'm stuck at home, I like to divide things up a little bit. So let's start with legs, Okay isometric lunge. This is going to be your isometric exercise. Now with the isometric lunge, what you're going to do is you're going to get into a lunge position. You're going to go slowly down into the lunge. Now go down to where your knee is hovering above the floor and then hold intense your entire body, but especially your quads, mm -hmm. hamstrings, and glutes. Your goal is to tense as hard as you possibly can with your legs without moving your body. You want to stay stationary, and you want to fire the shit yeah. out of those You're muscles. You're squeezing your entire body down there at the bottom to, to really maximize that recruitment process. That's it. And then do that. hold that for about two to five seconds, then come up, give yourself a few seconds, and then repeat this. You want to do this five times. So that's one set, five times. Now, if at the end of this five reps of these this isometric squeeze if you feel like you didn't really do much you weren't squeezing hard that's enough that's your fault this yeah. is that's what's great about isometrics is you control the intensity of this and I, this is something i tried to get across in my uh you know my webinar when we're going through the mobility drills is i mean i was sweating my ass off mm -hmm. it's mobility exercises it's not even we're not even talking about hard isometric training like this just, but you control that, and the more intense you do it, the more you recruit. So that's, you got to think about that while you're that, doing it. That's right. So try doing between two to four sets uh, for for this exercise, and it's five reps each leg. Again, you're going to go down, hold that bottom position, but don't just hold. When you're at the bottom, squeeze as hard as you can 
all the muscles you're trying to target. Hold that for two to five seconds. Come up, give your, let yourself catch your breath, and then repeat five reps again. You want to do about two to four sets. I think three is probably perfect for most people. Next is chest. Chest is the iso squeeze. This is a great exercise. This is what you do. Grab a broomstick that you can hold at arm's length in front of your body with your hands outside of your shoulders. Squeeze the stick with your hands and then drive your hands together like you're trying to get your hands to touch each other. Now, don't slide on the stick. Okay, mm -hmm. The goal is not to slide on the stick. But or you want to elevate your shoulders up, right? You want to maintain good posture with this, retract your shoulders, depress your shoulders down, really squeeze you know, as much as you can to really feel your way into your chest from your shoulders. And when we're just so you, those that are listening right now are going, oh, shit, this is a lot of trying to scramble, take notes. Justin and Doug are going to shoot these videos. So you're going to have these yeah. videos. We'll post it on Instagram when this episode is live. So you'll be able to go back to we'll our- demonstrate all these for you after this. Right. So as Sal's walking through and giving you your cues, don't freak out or be scrambling that you, you don't understand. Uh, if anything sounds uh, complicated, we're going to shoot a video of each of these exercises and Justin will go through all the great right. cues. And we'll, 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 we'll give uh, Jackie this so she can put the actual workout in the show notes. I think that works out right, Doug. That's mm -hmm. mindpumppodcast.com. You click on the episode, go to the bottom, you'll see show notes. So this is all written down. So do that with your chest. Hold that squeeze for as hard as you can for five seconds. Do three sets of that. By the way, you want to rest about 30 seconds to a minute in between uh, each one of these sets. So do that five second squeeze, release, give do it again, do that for five times. That's one set. So five second hard squeezes, do that five times. That's one set. Do that for three sets for the chest. Now, when you go to the back, prone Cobra, we have lots of videos on YouTube. I think we've shown that exercise several times on our YouTube channel. With prone Cobra, same exact thing. Get into that position. Squeeze your back and your body as hard as you can. Hold that squeeze for five seconds. Come out of the position. Go back into it and do it again. Do that five reps for three sets. For shoulders, there's something called isometric shoulder retraction. By the way, all these exercises, for those of you that have MAPS Anywhere, they're all in the MAPS Anywhere program. So for the isometric shoulder retraction, just like you did with the chest, where you have the, the, the broomstick in front of you, but this time, instead of squeezing your hands together, what I want you to do is pull your shoulder blades back together, so like you're squeezing your shoulder blades back together, and then pull your hands apart as hard as you can in that isometric position. Again, the tension you create yourself is what's going to make this mm -hmm. effective. Hold that for five seconds as hard as you can. Give yourself a second or two. Repeat it. Five reps. Three sets for this exercise. For core, there's something called ho a hollow body hold. This is, again, we'll have this filmed. This is where you're laying on the floor with your body, arms extended out, your legs extended out. Now what you want to do is you want to create a U with your body, so crunch up. You look like a banana. You look yeah. like a big, like a curved or banana. A canoe. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Hold that squeeze in your abs as hard as you can. Tense up your entire body. Again, five-second hold. Do that for five reps. Do three sets. Okay, now we're going to go to the BFR. So you're done with all the is isometric stuff. Now we're going BFR. Here's what you're going to do. Tie off both arms. Grab yourself a light weight or a band. Do 30 reps first. Get the biceps to, to really burn, really pump. Give yourself about, uh, you know, I don't know, 15, 20 second rest. Then do 15 reps, 15 to 20 second rest, 15 reps, 15, 20 second rest, 15 reps. So the total is four to five sets. So you're going 30 reps, then you're aiming for 15 each time. Rest in between of them, in between them for about 20 to 30 seconds. Then go to triceps, do the same thing with a band press down, just like a tricep press down, put your band over a door, or if you have a door attachment, you could do that. Squeeze the triceps at the bottom, same thing, 30 reps, 15 reps, 15 reps, 15 reps, 30 second rest in between. You are gonna feel an insane burn, totally normal. Uh, just try to deal with it. When you take the bands off or, or the, the, the things around your arms off, you're probably gonna have the craziest pump you've ever had in your entire life with your arms. Now we're gonna move to calves. You can do the same thing with your calves. You want to tie off right above your calf, below your knee, so that you feel some pressure in your calves. Now you want to do bodyweight calf raises off the off of a, a stair or a step, or stand on something so your ankles can your your heels can go down a little bit. Again, thirty reps, rest. Fifteen reps, rest. Fifteen reps, rest. Fifteen set reps, rest. You want to do a total of about five sets of this. You're going to feel an insane burn again. Take the the bands off your legs. 
and let them chill out and see what happens. Also on our, our the show notes at the uh, mindpumppodcast.com, uh, Jack, you also link over. We did a YouTube video, Sal. You know, I did a YouTube video on how to do BFR also. Oh, how to put the bands yep. on properly. So how to put on the bands. So if you're g- kind of wondering what's that look like or how tight, we kind of cover all that in the YouTube. So you have access to all this. Justin's going to shoot videos. So if you don't own the Anywhere program and you don't have BFR, because if obviously if you have the BFR guide and you have Anywhere, you already have great demos already uh, in there and you just got to put the, the programming together. Otherwise, uh, Justin will shoot these uh, videos so everybody has them. And then we also have YouTube uh, uh, video demos of this. Now, here's the deal if you want to learn. So of all of this, the more difficult thing to kind of, like Adam was saying, is to kind of figure out really how to do BFR or occlusion training properly. So uh, we have an occlusion training guide that really, really breaks it down. Now, normally we sell it for $27. It's a very inexpensive guide. But you're going to get half off, 50% off. Uh, we're going to do a 50% off code for people who listen to this episode. So it's $13.50. Uh, you can find that at mapsbfr.com. That's M-A-P-S-B-F-R.com. And then the code for the 50% off is BFR50, no space for the discount. Also, you can find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal. And Adam at Mind Pump Adam.